It's loud. Makes your car shoot flames. It's probably the biggest flex at every car meet. It's two step, baby. So today I'm gonna be talking about two step, what it is, and how you can do it with your own car. We've all seen it. You had a car meet, this guy's behind the wheel, foot on the throttle, flames shooting out of the back, sounds like gunshots being fired, neighbors are calling the police. <laughs> That's commonly referred to as two-step in car culture, which is actually short for two-step rev limiter. But what is a two-step rev limiter and how does it work? Well, let's talk about rev limiters first. A rev limiter is basically your ECU stopping your engine from going over a certain RPM. Almost all cars come with a rev limiter from factory, which is usually set near or at redline. You could put your foot on the throttle all the way to the floor, but the engine speeds will not go beyond that rev limit. This is so the engine doesn't rev beyond its own limits and just start falling apart. It would just stay at that set RPM. So all cars have at least a one step rev limiter. You see where I'm going here? With a two step rev limiter, you have two steps or two different settings for the rev limiter. The first one is the one I just talked about near the red line. And the other is usually set at a lower RPM for when you want to launch the car without burning up your tires. When activated, you can press the throttle all the way down and the ECU would just keep the RPM at that rev limit. That way you can stay on throttle and launch the car without having to worry about feathering the gas pedal to keep traction. And once the car starts moving, the ECU would only limit the revs at the first step of the rev limiter, which is near the red line. So yes, two-step is basically launch control. And some performance cars even come with it from factory. And that's it, that's two-step, we did it. But wait, why stop there when you can have more? You can have a third step, for when you're shifting gears. It's called flat foot shifting or no lift shifting. Cause normally you would let off the throttle when you're shifting. But with the three step rev limiter, you would keep your foot on the throttle. And when you clutch in to shift gears, the ECU would just keep the revs at that set RPM. That could keep your turbo spooled and your engine in the power band when you're shifting. And let me tell you, it's super satisfying. Okay, so where do the flames come from? How does that happen? It's all in the tune. There are usually three ways you can set up your ECU to control engine speed, fuel cut, Fuel and spark cut, spark cut only. Fuel cut is not commonly used for two step, but it's when you tune your ECU to cut fuel to limit engine speed. Fuel and spark cut is just like fuel cut, but it also retards ignition timing, so the spark happens a bit later. With less fuel to burn and sparks happening a bit later, the engine starts to make less and less power. Less power, baby. <laughs> Until it can't rev any higher. And then we have spark cut only. In this case, the ECU is tuned to retard the ignition timing only without cutting any fuel. The effect is basically the same. The spark timing is retarded to a point that the engine starts to lose power and it just can't rev any higher. Except the fuel isn't cut this time. And with the timing of the sparks being off, some of that fuel that's in the cylinder doesn't get to burn by the time the exhaust valves open. So the unburned fuel gets pushed into your exhaust manifold and that's where it ignites in your exhaust system. And that's how you get the pops and bangs and some flames. <laughs> Now some people say this is anti-lag. This is not anti-lag. This is just launch control. Anti-lag is completely different. Yes, it does build boost, but that boost is more of a side effect than the absolute goal, which is to keep you at a certain RPM. Some people think two-step is only for turbocharged cars, which is also wrong. It's just launch control. You can have it in a naturally aspirated car. Like some Mustangs and Camaros come with launch control, which is two-step. They're not turbocharged. And I'm talking about the real Mustangs and Camaros, the ones that come with the V8, none of that EcoBoost or any of that. Now, is it bad for your car? The short answer is no. Launch control or two-step isn't bad for your car. But when it's tuned with spark cut only and it's shooting flames out of the exhaust, yes, it is bad, very bad. It could potentially damage or crack your exhaust manifold, damage your exhaust valve. And if it's tuned to the extreme, you could blow a head gasket and a lot more. And if your car is turbocharged, it can do a lot of expensive damage to your turbocharger as well. Not to mention the hearing damage it could cause to you and the people around. I'm serious, it's too loud. And hearing loss is permanent. It won't come back. So in conclusion, two step rev limiters are just a form of launch control that you can get with a simple tune. If you care about your engine and you want it to last a while, you would tune it with fuel and spark cut and it won't shoot flames. 
but if you want flames you do it with spark cut only which i don't recommend at all it's not it's fun when you do it once but now at least you know how it works that should cover everything let me know in the comments if i missed anything also next i'm going to talk about suspension and how you can lower your car and hopefully we're going to get back on the project miata and lower that thing all the way to the ground well maybe not that low but you know so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of these episodes that i have planned if you like this video give me a like if you don't just click the like aggressively that will show me and as always thanks for watching